open conference is John Lonergan. Um, John, I always have difficulty, I've introduced him several times, so uh, he uh, is retired a couple of years, but he spent most of his working life as governor of Mountjoy Prison. And I once unfortunately introduced him by saying he spent most of his working life in prison, <laughs> uh, which was even uh, more inappropriate since my name is Crooks. <laughs> um, but there we go. Um, that experience has given John a unique insight into the particular life choices or, or lack of life, life choices for young people, mostly young men, um, uh, and many of them uh, coming from social and economic deprived areas of our country. After his retirement, uh, John published an autobiography that was a bestseller. Uh, Earlier this month, he presented uh, an hour-long television program called School Principles, which was very well received and recognized uh, for the, the kind of work that he's been involved in. We're very pleased that he's on the board of Archways, uh, and I'd now ask him to address us and to open our conference. John. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tony, and first of all, it's a pleasure and an honour to be invited to say a few words at the opening of this conference um, because of its significance, and particularly today, the 19th of September 2012, it will be, I hope, remembered for, for many, many future generations because as the Irish people in particular know today, today is the day that the government is going to disclose the wording of the children's rights referendum, um, and sometime around half past 11 today, uh, the wording is going to be made public and that's going to be a very significant announcement <coughs> and I hope everybody here uh, will take an interest in it uh, just on the wording alone because the wording is going to have uh, great significance uh, for children in the future and then of course the 10th of November when uh, the, the referendum is going to take place um, and I, I suppose it's just I was just reflecting on this uh, the last few days uh, in terms of, of Ireland and our reputation that we were a very Christian country uh, and you'd assume that on the basis of, of, of principles of Christianity that the people who you'd look after best of all would be the most vulnerable people, those who need our support and our care. Uh, but when we look back on that over the last hundred years or so, our treatment of children in many cases, those who were vulnerable in particular, those who were born into poverty was appalling. Uh, and while we have been able to finger many organizations for their failure, what we have failed to do is to accept that as a society, all of us failed miserably as well, because we were part of the whole system as well. It was us. Um, and so it's very easy sometimes to distance ourselves as individual citizens from responsibility. But, um, but we know that as a society, all of us as a society failed, failed children. Um, and as Tony said, I became very aware of that all of 44 or 5 years ago when I went to work in prison. Um, I went with a very simple percep perception and belief and understanding, and that was that all the baddies, I'd meet them in prison, and all the goodies would be outside. Um, uh, and honestly, and I'd say most people feel like that when you hear prison mentioned. And I discovered very quickly, within a week, that the reality was quite different. And I often describe it really as most of the people I met in those days, back in the late 60s, in prison, were more, you know, more, more appropriate to be, to be accommodated in the local county homes at the time. Because they were all people with serious personal uh, difficulties in terms of physical, mental, emotional, psychological, and in every other sphere of life as well. They were inadequate. <coughs> they were neglected people. And it was from that I began to, to reflect on the need for in early intervention and early support, and that we had actually discrimination within our society. And if you happen to be born in certain areas to certain parents, then your, your chances in life were greatly diminished, and in some cases totally and utterly eliminated from birth onwards. And that's where my, where my energy still comes from, us, that the, the real, realization that many, many young children, even today in 2012, uh, are still born into circumstances that are, are very, very difficult, and we still have children that don't have a breakfast in the morning. And many organizations that work like you do at the coalface know that so well. Um, and that's when you look at it, it's in itself appalling. Um, education, Tony mentioned education. I've been saying this for many, many years. Um, in many ways, uh, and, and part of, of today is all about really education in its broadest context. Um, the pathway out of all this is, is basically education. That's the, 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 the means of getting out of it. Um, and when we think about it, 
uh, the amount of, of support and, and, and input that we, we provide parents with uh, to start off, uh, the most important job that they'll ever do in life is to, is to look after care for children, Re rear children or raise children or nurture children, whatever word you like to use. And still many, many adults are totally prepared for it simply because they never got the opportunity to be aware of and to be educated and to develop. And that's a, a reality, generation after generation. Um, and unless we break that cycle, uh, the, the, I, would, the, I just want to mention one other thing <coughs> that's, that's just a, important to say this, that the easiest part of the next couple of months is going to, ca is to campaign for and get the referendum passed. Uh, and that will be, uh, it'll be a psychological thing. It will be wonderful to see Ireland putting children and their rights at the very top, at the very core. That would be wonderful. But it's only the beginning. It's like laying the foundation for a house. The, the, the referendum would be the foundation. And on the basis of that foundation you build. But the foundation is not a house. And I suppose the real task is, uh, as a society, are we going to ensure that all the necessary resources are made available? to ensure that, that that philosophy that's going to be enshrined in the Constitution is going to be delivered for those who are right, right at the very bottom. And that is going to be a real test, because it cuts right across every level of society, from housing to amenities to facilities to education to, uh, uh, to opportunity, to every facet. Uh, and my philosophy has always been that the state should support uh, and encourage and facilitate uh, in other words, be totally proactive rather than to be reactive. And I'm afraid our history as a state is we're far better at reacting than we are at the proactive stuff. Uh, so something happens and we jump in as a, as a state and often do worse damage than, than was the original problem, as people know. Um, so the state's main responsibility should be to be in there to ensure that things don't go wrong, to prevent things going wrong, to ensure that no child suffers. And that's it all around uh, supporting uh, families, individuals, communities, uh, and agencies of the state and voluntary organizations to enable them to do the work that needs to be done, to support people, to encourage people, and to, to cut off the difficulties before they arise. <clears throat> have to mention as well the economic, the economic situation. Every single thing today is, is, is referred to in economic terms. It's just, it can't be done. You, you know the state of the economy. Every morning, Ireland, you know the economy. Well, you know, this is what this referendum is all about. If we prioritize children and if we mean it, well, then we'll make available the resources, as simple as that. We made available resources when the banks collapsed, but we were told that it was in the interest of the economy. So, in other words, we, we really don't put children on, and human beings at the top. Uh, so economics are far more important, and anything can be justified on the basis of economics. But it's not acceptable that children continue to be neglected uh, on the basis that we don't have the resources. What we, we don't have is the priorities, and we don't have the commitment. And I suppose that's the real message yeah, of today, is that unless Irish society supports the principles and the philosophy of the, of the referendum, and ensure that young people, and children in particular, are, 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 get, get the support and the services that they, they fundamentally need, well then we have failed. Uh, and, and we know from the incredible years and pro wonderful programs like that, we know how significant, uh, birth, from the day of birth to the first two or three or four years, how significant that is. And then most of the damage is done at that stage. And, unless, and, 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 and you know, perhaps people think that nowadays we have a wide spectrum of services available and, and we don't. Uh, we still are hit and miss. They're still dependent an awful lot on voluntary organisations going out there and having to nowadays raise the resources well because the state is also withdrawing resources. Um, most of the voluntary organisations that I know would do wonderful work if they could concentrate on their work. But what more, have they to concentrate on more, more and more on raising the money to allow them to deliver the service? So it's just twofold. They're expected to do the work and now they're also expected to do the fundraising. And that's not just not fair. Uh, it's wonderful to have voluntary organisations doing the work, at least then the state, and us, that's us, should resource. So uh, energy spent fundraising and things like that is lost energy as far as I'm concerned, because that energy should really be put at, uh, you know, at, the, at the feet and at the floor of children, helping children and their families and their communities. Because we still have communities, and I was working with them in the, over the last three or four months, five months, uh, and it's still appalling to think of the circumstances that some people live in. Just appalling. Uh, and how we can, can justify it on any basis, I, I just don't know. Uh, and it, it would make you angry to see some t you know, so the conditions that some children are expected to grow up in. And then when they're 15 or 16 or 17, they're expected to compete with those at the other level who have everything in their favor. 
every motivation, every stimulation, every opportunity. And I'm going to finish an opportunity because honestly, I believe that you know, I keep on, I'm talking to second level children and second level education. I always give them the old dilemma, if you had a choice at birth, only one choice, and, and you had one of two, opportunity or talent, which would you go for? And it's fascinating sometimes to hear the arguments in the class around this issue. I have no hesitation in saying myself, give me opportunity anything. It's opportunity that will make the difference. And of all the talent in the world that I discovered and that you discover day in, day out, but unless somebody is there to nurture it and to develop it, that talent is of no value. And isn't that a terrible cost as well? An awful cost to the individual and an awful cost to society. I, I have said it in the past, I have met, I met in prison some of the most talented people in the world. And, and the sad thing was they didn't realize they were talented. And that is what we're talking about ensuring that children are given every opportunity to grow to their potential, to reach their potential. And, and social class has nothing got to do with the original raw potential. What has got to do with it is the amount of opportunity that children are afforded or given. And I suppose that's the task for a, a, a society that says it's a republic and that it stands for the people and, and responding to all uh, its members. That's the challenge. Can we ensure that every child is that's born, that I believe is born equally, but that throughout their early years that they get the opportunity to grow to their potential. That they get the social skills to allow them and the confidence to allow them to participate uh, in, in the broader society. Even at primary school level, they need social skills at that very early age to make the best use of it. And we, in our little program a few weeks ago, we discovered that the, the transfer from primary into second level education was traumatic for most of them. They just couldn't compete, they couldn't go at the pace, and our education system is far too narrow uh, to facilitate uh, the, the, those very significant number of people. So, um, and then finally, I just want to pay tribute to Archways. I have, I have the pleasure of serving on the board. Uh, I know firsthand the wonderful work they do. Uh, and I suppose the main thing of all, as many of you know, is it's the wonderful people that do. Because it's all about people at the end of the day. The whole system, the whole of, of, of society is about individual people working away. And it's about their attitude and about their whole philosophy. And it's fantastic to see, uh, work with an organization where you know that the philosophy is to, to, to do the best for children. And I keep using that word, nurturing. It's about nurturing the little child, making sure that that little child gets every support to enable that child to, to reach that potential and to live a, a normal life. A normal life in the context of what we see as a normal life, to be able to reach that potential. So it's a pleasure to, to, uh, to pay tribute to the work that people, uh, so many people do with children that, the, as I said, the problem and the frustration is that so, the, 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 the tide is coming in on top of people. Uh, the more the economy suffers, the, the more recessions we have, the more cutbacks, the worse uh, the people that suffer the most are the most vulnerable. That's amazing. Uh, and that's the reality. So to, 10 euro for a millionaire is nothing. 10 euro for some misfortune on social welfare is, is, you know, is, a, is a fortune. And that's the way to measure. So I would, I would delighted to, to be here to, to formally open the conference. And I'm certainly looking forward to the input during the day. Thank you very much.